Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Nicolo. Isn't that a very big issue regarding privacy? Like voice assistants, how they usually work is that they record your voice, um, most of them all of the time actually, and upon hearing some trigger uh, phrase, they record what comes next, then send that to servers on somebody else's computer, <laughs> simplifying it, process that there and then send back you know your answer but that gives away your voice your data everything it even requires a connection most of the time so isn't that a problem now of course this is a bit of generalizing different voice assistants will work in different ways but there is actually a project for a voice assistant that is meant to be privacy enabled by default and that project has very close ties to KD Plasma actually and just to be clear this is not a sponsored video or anything I just you know like the project. Okay so what you're seeing right now is the Mark II which is a product by Mycroft that is you know a little Google Home it's a bit pricey as you can see but it's reasonable when compared to some of the competition that you have at this price point. And the cool thing is that this little device runs KD Plasma. Now obviously just look at the screen that is not KD Plasma desktop but actually KD Plasma comes in very different size and form factors. You have Plasma Mobile for mobile phones and there's another project which is called KD Plasma Nano which aims to implement a very bare bone uh, structure that can be used in even Internet of Things kind of devices, such as, you know, the Mark II. So the Mark II runs this KD Plasma Nano, if I'm not mistaken, I could be, but that's how I recall it. Does it mean though that that's the only place where Microsoft runs? Because again, it could be interesting to have at least one voice uh, assistant that is private by default, which means that everything happens offline on your computer, nothing nothing is sent to Microsoft itself. I've tried the project, it's, it has some cool concepts as services, you can add some, you can remove some, it is a cool project. So do we have to spend 350 to actually get it? And yes, we'll be happy to have a KD Plasma device in our houses, but we already run KD Plasma on your desktop maybe, so can we get it there? So since 2017, Microsoft has a Plasmoid. That is a little component that you can add to your KD Plasma desktop to actually use Microsoft, uh, <laughs> Microsoft, I obviously meant Microsoft on your KD Plasma desktop. Isn't that cool? So how it works is that you do install Microsoft that is actually a slightly complex uh, part of the task that took me some time the first time I tried it. And then you install the Plasmoid, which has its own repository. And then you just add that to your Plasma panel, as an example, or on your desktop. And it has a button to, you know, talk to it, but you can also just type your queries, which could be more interesting on a desktop form factor. So not, not only you can buy, you know, the that Mark device, Mark II device, which is running KD Plasma to try Microsoft, but you can also try it directly on your desktop. But that's actually not about it because KD Plasma, as I said, comes in various different sizes and forms, and there are other form factors that could be more interesting for a voice assistant point of view. As an example, you usually don't want to have a voice assistant on your desktop. That's usually not the use case. However, on your phone, it's much different. Usually it's more difficult or it takes more time to interact with elements on your phone. So it might be just easier to tell the phone, bring me home to just run up Google Maps or whatever you use with the route to home already there. That would be cool to also have in the Linux world, I think. And Minecraft tries to offer that. But can you actually run that on your phone? And as always with Linux on mobile phones, uh, keep in mind that we are not currently in a super ready, everything is great status right now there's still work going on on this kind of things but of course there's somebody who already tried to do that so this is Mike Stone which is mostly the lonely house of Mike being in his ideological purity at the moon that was a tough sentence to say thank you and the thing is that he tried to actually use Minecraft on the pine phone and there's all the nice article you know actually explaining how it works. In, he mentions the fact that Mark II dev kits are shipping. Mark II is the device that I showed you before. 
And then it says like, can we actually try to use the PinePhone to interact with the Mark II? Especially because the price point of the PinePhone is much lower compared to the Mark II. So he tried to do that, he explains how it goes about it. And then eventually he tries to ask a question using the command line interface. And the question was, how is the weather? And the answer is, it's currently clear sky and 62 degrees, which is a terrible weather for our Celsius people, but I guess that for Fahrenheit, that's pretty good, right? Like six, 62 degrees, if that was Celsius, why aren't you all using Celsius anyway? Anyway, anyway, this was done using the command line interface, as I said, but it seems like the microphone was actually running. So what he tried to do is take the pine phone. He went to another room which had no micro devices in it because he was also the he is also the owner of a uh, Mark I. And he tried to ask what time is it to the pine phone. And the pine phone promptly replied with the correct time, which thankfully is standard. Otherwise it would be like it's the 40 hour 40th <laughs> hour of the day. I don't know what do you use in America to count time. I don't know at this point. So it actually worked. And this is extremely important because a voice assistant makes sense for a device like the PinePhone and the PinePhone is much cheaper compared to the Mark II. So great news. So, okay, what other form factors could benefit from, from somebody, something like the Mycroft voice assistant? And the other use case that you can see going around if you're into this sort of things is TVs, like controlling a TV. You've probably seen those like Apple remote for Apple TV that has Siri on it. And really that's the same idea on the KD Plasma World 2. We do have Plasma Big Screen. What is Plasma Big Screen? It is KD Plasma, again, but designed so that it makes sense to put that into a television and then only control it through a remote. So you just grab your remote, put a Plasma Big Screen maybe on a Raspberry Pi, connect that to your um, big television, and then you have a smart TV without having to go out and buy like old TV stuff, I guess. I've never had Apple TV. So does that work? Well, actually, Plasma Big Screen, as I was saying, was designed from the very beginning with the idea to have Mycroft inside of it. So whenever you actually try to use it, you do uh, have an icon in the top panel, roughly here usually, that is the Mycroft icon and that you can use to actually give some voice commands. This actually shows up in my testing even if you do not have Mycroft installed, but of course you do need it to run. And it's even immediately displayed into the making full use of open source Mycroft AI into the main web page about Plasma Big Screen. In fact, this is the blog post that announced Plasma Big Screen for the very first time by Marco Martin. And it immediately says, Plasma Big Screen is a platform intended on smart to use on smart TVs with a big remote friendly UI controls and voice activation. What technology did we use for it? Plasma, of course, and Mycroft. Again, this was very much designed for Mycroft. They offered the so-called skills and each skill takes care of a particular voice interaction. And the cool thing is that you can even add your own skills, which means that it should be easy to allow for interaction with the Plasma interface just by adding some skills. In theory, there would be a cool, you know, video that showcased the Mycroft integration, but apparently it removed YouTube term of, of service. I guess that, I don't know, maybe Marco showcased playing a YouTube video using Mycroft and that YouTube video was under copyright. I don't know. <laughs> what, what happened there? Hello, YouTube? But as I was saying, even from the very beginning, there were some skills, some pre-installed, some from the kitty store to fully show voice controls. In particular, a YouTube client skill, which is perfectly usable both from a remote control and voice only. This is how it looks like. Interesting that the Kitty Plasma big screen announcement has as its highlighted video introducing GNOME 3.36. Nice reference there. Finally, if you were wondering, this is the GitLab 
repository that contains the Plasma Minecraft applet. It hasn't changed much in the last two years, unless I'm out of the loop, but it should still work. This, which is a blog post from Ubuntu, Ubuntu log, sorry, showcase how the applet looks. Because yeah, actually setting up the voice control both on, you know, KD Plasma desktop and I've found even on Plasma big screen takes a little bit of time, time, sorry, and uh, tries. So if you're interested in exploring more of this kind of opportunity, then feel free to say, and I will go into that direction. But for now, this is a showcase of what technology do we currently have as an open source vo voice control for KD Plasma, of course, but also any other desktop. I believe that there's also a widget for GNOME, but I'm not 100% sure. I was obviously more focused on KD Plasma. So we have that. It works on the desktop, it works on the Pine phone, it works on TVs, it works pretty much anywhere. And it has its own little device, the Mark II that you can buy. And even that one runs with KD inside of it. So isn't that pretty cool? Or is it? Are you interested about this? Because to be honest, I think that this is super cool, but it's not the kind of project that I would personally use. And maybe we come with a bit of a privacy oriented mentality that prevents us from this kind of project. So please tell me that I'm wrong. Would you use a project like this? And will you use a project like this? Because that's really the only way to make sure that it will have a nice future. So thanks for following and um, as always, see you tomorrow with yet another episode.